Hi there, let's visit about aggressive toddlers, little ones who go wild and act out by hitting or spitting or slapping or kicking, those types of things. And uh, remember, <laughs> when I was a young parent, my kids did that stuff too. Oh, and it worried me so much. I remember uh, little Mark, when he was about 15 months of age, slapped a kid at a uh, little preschool daycare he was going to part-time and I was so anxious about it I was talking to all my friends what do I do what do I do and they were teasing me oh Charles is worried that Mark's going to become a serial slapper they used to say that but I knew even back then that it was important to catch these things when the kids are small way easier to deal with it when uh, their body size is small, the problem size is small, rather than when their body size is big and the problem size is really big. That's a tragic thing. So let's talk about what we can do to uh, address this when they're really little. And uh, I'd say the first thing is learn the uh-oh song. Learn the uh-oh song well and use it every single time the kid acts aggressively. And what's the uh-oh song? Oh, it's just a way of taking good care of ourselves while sending a strong but loving message that aggressive behavior, it doesn't pay in this home, doesn't work out so well for you. Lots of better ways to meet your needs and communicate than striking out. And so uh, the little kid hits me or bites me or slaps me or does something like this, or maybe they haul off and do it uh, unprovoked to one of their siblings, or it's the pet, you know, it could be. Uh, this is how it sounds. Uh-oh. Oh, condition yourself to say that when, or, or say to yourself, when I get angry, I'm gonna sing uh-oh. When I'm upset, I'm gonna sing uh-oh. You just repeat that in your head. Oh, maybe when you're going to sleep at night, right before you fall asleep, oh, when I get upset with my child, I'm gonna sing uh-oh, just for little kids, just for ones small enough to carry. And so, just perform this act of violence. Here we go, uh-oh. Look how calm I am. Of course, it's easy when I'm just talking about this in front of a camera, but uh, the calmer I can be when the real heat is on, the less likely that behavior is going to get locked in, that aggressive behavior is going to get locked in. There's nothing that locks in a behavior, rewards a behavior, cements a behavior in place better than some uh, frustration and anger on my part. Kids, little kids, oh, do they love that? They get revved up by it, don't they? So I want to be as calm as possible, or at least fake it real good. Uh-oh, off to the bedroom, bedroom safe, or off into the stroller, nice safe seat belt on, or up into the high chair, again, nice safe seat belt, child is safe at all times, or maybe I'm in public, uh-oh, right in the stroller, or uh-oh, in the playpen, and uh, the child gets to come out when they are calm, plus about a minute or two for every uh, year of their age. And, this is not designed to be a punishment. It's not designed to make the kid feel bad. It might, but it's not designed to do that. It's designed to send the message that you get to be around me. You get to be around other people when you're acting nice, you, when you're communicating uh, with your words or with at least a little kid with some gestures that are, are not violent rather than communicating by hitting. Okay, so we want to get that locked in real good. Let's, let's review it. Uh-oh, no reminders, no lectures, no second chances, just uh-oh, looks like a little bedroom time. Off to the bedroom. When do they come out? When they're acting calm. I may need to hold the door, find some other safe way to make sure the child stays in there. My lips are shut. Remember, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> Another way to think about it is, when in doubt, leave the words out. 
oh, I want to save the words for happy times. When we're playing, when things are going well, the words shut down when things are going poorly, and that's important. I have to say, the more words we use, the less effective this will become. And so I, I've known parents who did everything right. They talked too much, ruined it. So, hey, remember very, very few words. When they come out, a big hug, no lectures about anything, no discussion, just move right back into the daily routine. So I want to get real good at the uh-oh song. Also, want to get real good at stopping activities I'm doing with them as soon as they get aggressive. <laughs> you know, in fact, I, if I have an aggressive kid, a little kid, and I know that it's pretty predictable, I'm going to set up a play date with my best friend. And I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to, going to be uh, old people use the phone like this, you know. Young people, it's like this. So, okay, I'm going to be young. All right, so I'm on my cell phone. I'm talking to my friend. Uh, hey, I'm going to do a little training session. So will you meet me at the park with, you, with your daughter? And as soon as Zachary, that's my kid, Zachary uh, starts to get kind of aggressive or acts like he's going to be, I'm just going to say, oh, and then we're going to leave and uh, real quick. So don't be offended. And by the way, I'll do the same for you. So your friend knows this might happen. You, of course, know that this might happen. Your child doesn't know. You just want to keep it a secret. See, because these type of little mild consequences are always more powerful when they come as a bit of a surprise, like real world consequences often do, right? I mean, usually the police officer is not following behind me with a bullhorn saying, if you keep driving so fast, I'm going to give you a ticket. No, they just pull you over. And, and most of the time, they give you a ticket. Why do they do it? I mean, really, do most of them do it because they have some personal problem with you? And this is an important piece here. Or do they do it because they're current concerned about your safety? Yeah, that's the attitude we ought to have with our kids and consequences. Concerned about your safety, concerned about your life. You know, down deep the attitude is I love you so much that I want you to have a peaceful life. I, I want you to be able to drive down this highway of life uh, without getting in an accident or without crashing. I want you to have a peaceful life. So that's the love and logic attitude. Okay, so we got the uh-oh song discussed, and that is absolutely essential. We also talked about doing little, oh, we call strategic training sessions, where as soon as the kid gets aggressive, we stop the activity, maybe we go home, or maybe we play Candyland together. I mean, I always use that example. There's just so many memories of carbohydrate land, okay? And so we're playing with the kid, and as soon as they get rough, Oh, and we stop. Or maybe we're reading a book to the kid and they start getting rough. Oh, story's over, right? And then we go away, right? We go away. Two of the most effective consequences for little kids are, number one, the uh oh song, which is essentially changing their location to another spot so they're away from us in the activity, or ending the activity and removing ourselves. Very, very powerful. Again, what do you guess? If we're more consistent, do you think it'll work better? <laughs> you know the answer to that. So another thought about this, and, and I'm just going down the line, problem solving here. <laughs> Are you overscheduled? Is this little kid getting enough sleep? I, I think that little kids are a lot like dairy products, that uh, they have an expiration time each day, and you can't fix them once they're past that time. In other words, they go sour, and they just need to go to sleep, or at least be in their rooms, or be somewhere where they can have quiet time. And awful lot of little kids I see nowadays, a lot of big kids, a lot of adults, are overscheduled. They're trying to do too much. Yeah, they get so worn out, they just can't keep it together. So that's something to take a real honest look at. And uh, 
I, I'm saddened by the number of little kids that just, just, they're dragging and they really are melting down. So what are some other thoughts? Well, are they engaged in uh, too much screen time? Wow, even if it's not uh, violent stuff. I mean, screen time is so overstimulating for little kids. It just messes with their little neurons. And so I'm gonna say that little kids should have almost no screen time. You're gonna notice this as a parent. If you don't, you're in the, you know, in the rare, uh, you're the exception, right? But most parents, uh, especially if little kids will notice that the more time they sit in front of a screen, even if it's a positive type of video game, a learning activity or a, a positive video, the more time they're in front of that screen, the more uh, aggressive and uh, sometimes quite problematic behavior they display. Now, so I'm going down the list here and we've gone into screen time. We have gone into being tired. Now here's something else you might want to consider. Have you taught them how to communicate what they really want? <laughs> yeah, it just seems like as human beings, the default is to get aggressive when you want something. And it's not until we are older and have learned a lot of other skills that we start communicating uh, a little more peacefully. And so sometimes it's helpful to practice with the kid when things are going well, how do you ask for what you want? So when you're hungry, how do you ask for something? And I've even known uh, parents to teach their kids sign language. There's some great programs for doing that out there. And that can cut down quite a bit on some of this aggressive behavior. And just knowing how to ask for something or how do you let me know when you're, you're really frustrated or what do you do when you're really frustrated? I remember we had so much fun uh, when uh, many of a uh, couple of our kids were younger, we we had this um, they had these little puppets, and we would do these little puppet shows with the kid, and you know Elmo or Tigger or some other character was getting frustrated, and we'd go through all the different scenarios about what they would do. Oh, he just hit his brother. Do you think that's a good thing? No, that is so sad. Now he has to go off to uh-oh time, you know, those sorts of things. And oh, here's Tigger asking for what he wants with words. You think that's gonna work out better? Yeah, uh, and we giggle about this as adults, but the little kids really get into this sort of thing. And so as much as possible, play, play, play with the toys, uh, work out little scenarios between the toys between Ken and Barbie between you know maybe Elmo and Big Bird or Elmo and Tigger it's okay uh, whatever you use work out those little scenarios peaceful versus not so peaceful assertive versus aggressive the more of that play the more likely the kids are going to internalize how to get it done in the right way well, I hope this was helpful to you, and uh, always remember it really is a lot easier to deal with this stuff now than later. And make sure you get a hold of our book, Love and Logic, Magic for Early Childhood. That's going to teach you a whole lot about how to do that uh-oh song and some of these other skills. Well, thanks again.